To understand motion and forces in two dimensions, we need to understand the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll start there. The Pythagorean theorem obviously is named after Pythagoras, an ancient Greek thinker from the 500s BC. So very, very old. And it's pretty interesting that even though he lived so long ago, we actually know quite a good bit about him. Here's a picture of a bust of Pythagoras. So this is at least the sculptor's idea of what he might have looked like. And here's a picture of Pythagoras from a famous painting from the Middle Ages by a painter named Raphael. And this is Pythagoras here. This is just one small section of the painting by Raphael. There are lots of important people all compiled together in this painting. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle are in here. Euclid is in here. Um, but this is the, the portion of the painting with Pythagoras in it. So this is from a much later era. But again, there people have some guess as to what he might have looked like. But the most important thing about him was the ideas that he left us with. He was in charge of a group of thinkers named after him. The thinkers were called the Pythagoreans. And they were religious and philosophical thinkers as well as mathematicians. And they were a very elite group of thinkers and political leaders in, in the culture at the time. The mathematics was the most important part of their thinking, and everything else was built on top of that. So their religious ideas and their ideas about government all came from their mathematical ideas. That, the math was the foundation of their religion and their philosophy and everything else. And they had this huge emphasis on numbers, and Pythagoras was called the father of numbers. Numbers was the center of their thinking, and they believed that everything in the world could be described by numbers. Patterns in the season, in the seasons, could relate to patterns found in numbers, and ev everything was described by numbers. And numbers, of course, are used in the theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, which we still use today. So let's talk about the theorem. The Pythagorean theorem tells us something about right triangles. For any right triangle with sides of length A, B, and C, there's a certain relationship that holds. So draw a little right triangle here, and we'll put an A on one side and a B on one side. So A is just a variable. That's a number that represents the length of this side. And B is another number that represents the length of that side. And when we draw a right triangle, it's pretty common to put a little square down there in the corner indicating that that's a right angle. And the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse, and we'll call that C. So if, if you set up a triangle like this with the short sides, what we call the legs, labeled as A and B, and the hypotenuse labeled as C, then this relationship always holds. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we'll see a couple of simple examples here. If you have a triangle, and it's a right triangle, and the short sides are length 3 and 4, then the hypotenuse is length 5. And you can see here, in this case, A is 3, B is 4, and C is 5. And you can see that A squared plus B squared is C squared. If we write it out, we get 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So this is the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this is the Pythagorean theorem applied to this particular triangle. And when we do that, you can, you can see that this works. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25. And 9 plus 16 does, in fact, equal 25. So the Pythagorean theorem works. When we find three integers like this, 3, 4, and 5 in this case, that work with the Pythagorean theorem, then we refer to those numbers as a Pythagorean triple. And there are a lot of them. Here's another one. Um, you can come over here and draw a triangle a little bit longer. If this is length 5 and this is length 12, then the hypotenuse ends up being length 13. And you can see that that works as well. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. And you probably know that 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, and 13 squared is 169. And it turns out that 25 plus 144 
does in fact equal 169. So that one works as well. 5, 12, 13, those three numbers are also considered a Pythagorean triple. The Pythagorean theorem shows up all over the place. It shows up in, in algebra class, in geometry class, in trigonometry, in calculus, all these various branches of mathematics and fields of study. It shows up everywhere. What we'll be using it for is exactly this. If we know the two legs of a right triangle, then we can find the hypotenuse.